tombol subscribe. Hai learners, welcome back to Akses Belajar bersama saya, Mr. Chan. Nah learners, di video kali ini kita akan membahas judulnya tentang 5 Reason Why English is So Hard to Learn. Nah teman-teman tahu nggak apa sih alasan kenapa teman-teman di rumah itu mempelajari bahasa Inggris itu sangat susah. Nah ini dia alasannya. When you learn English, do you feel like your heart is going to explode? If so, you are not alone. In this video, I will discuss five reasons why English is so difficult to learn. Oke, okay, teman-teman di rumah, reason number one, complicated grammar rulers. If you are ever studied English grammar, you know how confusing it is. There are a lot of rules and exceptions to remember. You also have to study English tenses, which are impossible to master because they're used in so confusing. For example, nih teman-teman, the present continuous tense. Teman-teman udah tahu kan, pasti belajar nih di sekolah. I am doing have a various usage. We can use it to talk about something that's happening at the time of speaking. As a sample like I am watching TV in the living room. Jadi itu digunakan jika teman-teman melakukan kegiatan tersebut. Nah, we can use it to talk about an activity that's ongoing, unfinished or incomplete. Like I am learning to play the guitar. We can use it to talk about future plans like I am going to visit my parents on next Sunday. That's not all. You also have to learn other difficult topics like preposition, like in, on, at, of, and so on. Confusing sentence structure, I saw him do something versus I saw him doing something and much more. To the top of it, Even after a lot of studying, most English students still cannot speak English well. Even though they know most grammar rules, this is because when they are speaking English, they have to form sentences correctly. There are no time to think about those rules. Teman-teman, lanjut ke alasan kedua, yaitu you are not a baby anymore. When it comes to language learning, babies have a couple of advantage over adults. You know, first of all, their hearing is amazing. They can easily hear the difference between two very similar sounds in any language. But as they get older, they start to lose the ability to hear sounds that are not present in their native language. For instance, a um, six months old Japanese baby can hear the difference between R and L sounds of the English language, although the two sounds aren't present in Japanese. But at one year old, that same baby can no longer hear the difference. This is how why many Japanese people can't difference between words rock and luck. To them, they sound, you know, the same. Nah, personally, I have a trouble hearing the difference between ch and sh sound. My native language has only one sound that similar to those two. So, it's hard for me to differentiate between words like cheer and share. They can sound of the same to me. But learners, you know what? To a baby or native English speaker's ears, the difference is as clear as night and day. Okay, next, reason number three, language interference. Language interference is when the knowledge of your native language causes you to use English incorrectly. An obvious example is when you speak English with a foreign accent. You know, like because your native language influences you, 
the pronounce of English. Unfortunately, your first language not only affect your accent, but also your English grammar. For instance, the German noun information can also be used in plural form like informationen. So some German students use information in English too, which is correct. Here's another example as a tired person. A Thailand, I find English preposition at in on to be a practical difficult. The you know Thailand language has a preposition too, but we use them differently. Well, learners, in Thailand there are no perfect you know, counterparts for at in and on. So when I use English preposition, I sometimes I suddenly apply to the rules of the Thailand language which leads to grammatical mistakes. Of course, children don't have this problem because they have no pre-existing knowledge of any language. It's no wonder why learning English as a second language is so hard. Okay, reason number four, interactive learning methods. If you are like me, you probably started learning English in the school or in the college. You know, in the school, you probably sat in the class listening to the teacher or memorizing some grammar rules. Or if you're learning English by yourself, you might be spending a lot of the time possibly watching English lesson on YouTube. Sadly, this is not an effective way to learn English at all. It is completely different from the way you learn your first language I'm speaking from personal experience here. I used to study grammar in the school and college. I always got the best grades, but after graduating and getting a job at international company where I had to communicate in English with my foreign co-workers, I realized that my spoken English was pretty bad. Have you studied grammar a lot? Have you watched many English lessons on YouTube? If so, are you able to speak English well? If not, it means what you have been doing isn't working. When you use effectively learning methods, it's going to be difficult or even impossible to improve your English. Okay, the last rules number five no speaking partner if you want to improve your english uh, like listening reading or even writing skill in english that's a quiet and manageable you can learn and practice these skills by yourself at home but what if you want to improve your spoken english this is when things get complicated to improve your speaking skill, you need a practice partner, someone you can speak English with. That person should be able to speak English quite well. Learners, do you know, for many people, it's hard to find someone like that. Perhaps they don't live in an English-speaking country, or maybe they don't, you know, but their lifestyle doesn't allow them to communicate in English much. If this is as you as well, it's a going to be hard to learn to speak good English. Jadi teman-teman, itulah lima alasan kenapa sangat sulit belajar bahasa Inggris. Intinya adalah dari kemauan teman-teman terlebih dahulu. Kalau misalkan teman-teman udah punya kemauan, aku mau belajar bahasa Inggris. Nah, disitulah langkah awal teman-teman belajar. Kalau ada niat, itu pasti dimudahkan. Dan jangan lupa untuk selalu practice and practice because practice makes you perfect. Oke okay, teman-teman, terima kasih sudah mengikuti video pembelajaran kali ini. Sampai jumpa di video selanjutnya. Bye bye and see you next time. Belajar itu menyenangkan. 
Jangan lupa klik tombol subscribe.